What's up guys, welcome back to Jet Ski Rehab and today we're gonna be doing the ultimate brake job on our Jeep, Jeep Wrangler LJ. This is our parts list right here. We have new premium quality centric rotors. They're extremely nice rotors. They're coated on the front, the side, and the back. So they're not gonna rust. They're a very high quality rotor. I'm actually really impressed with these after holding them. We have our extended brake lines. I'm gonna say something about these. Our Jeep is lifted two and a half inches right now. It's a rough country lift. I do not like it. I didn't put it on there, so I'm gonna change it. We will be going with a four inch savvy slash rock jock slash curry lift, whatever you wanna call it. It'll be a four inch. And at that point, since we'll be flexing out off-road and stuff, we will need extended brake lines. That's what these are. These are the two front extended brake lines. There's also one for the rear but we're not doing the rear brakes today. So we're gonna save the rear for another day. These are the part numbers. I'm not sure which is driver and which is passenger. Look that up for yourself. I'll have to figure that out when I get there. Driver and passenger calipers. Part numbers right there. This is just Duralast Remans. I'm very surprised at how cheap TJ calipers are. You can get calipers for as little as like under $20 on Rock Auto. These were 35 a piece at AutoZone, but that's just what I could get locally. So if I had my choice, I'd go with the Centric, but I was kind of in a time crunch. So we also picked up some pressed on brake fluid. This is Dot 3 fluid. I like pressed on stuff, so I'm gonna use it. That is what we used to flush our brakes. We have already flushed our brake system on the Jeep. We did that yesterday. And if you are going to be installing brake parts, I recommend you do it. It takes like 30 minutes to an hour. I have a little vacuum pump that I use, a little hand pump. You can get them at Harbor Freight for like 20, 30 bucks. It's super easy. Just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of fluid. We used one whole bottle to flush the system yesterday. I have another bottle that we're gonna use to do it today whenever we install our extended brake lines. The reason you do that is you don't want, your old fluid has a lot of stuff, a lot of dirt and junk in it. You don't want that in your new calipers because it's gonna make them stick. I already have one sticky caliper. I don't need my new one sticking. So the other thing we have is this tool. This is the brake bleeding lockout tool from Black Magic Brakes. It screws in to the shuttle valve and it holds it in place. Simple as that. Some people say that whenever you whenever you bleed a Jeep, you put the key on and sometimes the shuttle valve will move and a light will come on on your dash and you have to buy one of these. I went ahead and bought this at a precaution. It was $11, $12, something like that. Cheap enough for me to just go ahead and say, yeah, let's buy it and have it in case we need it. I used it. I went ahead and put it in there just for precautionary measures. I don't feel like messing up stuff. So got that brake parts cleaner. You never know when you might need it. Soapy water, detergent. Any detergent based cleaner will work according to Black Magic. We have to clean our rotors with them because they come coated with this you can see it on here it's like this filmy stuff from the factory so they don't want this to rust and shipping well we have our soapy water just mixed up in harbor freight pump sprayer it says simple green i don't have simple green i have purple power but purple power is corrosive so i don't want to use that this is detergent based cleaner and water hot water now we have the sauce black magic brake pads 477 in case y'all don't know what black magic brake pads look like. They look like every other brake pad. They almost seem semi-metallic, I'm not sure. I don't know how these are made. I don't know what the difference is, but people swear by them and we're gonna give them a test today and I'll let you know how I think. Cause I've done many brake jobs and I know what new normal auto parts store brake pads feel like. So I know what we're gonna, I know if we're gonna see a difference in these. People claim they're the sauce. These come at a price. They're $125 for this box right here. That will do both front sides. So there's four pads in that box. That's in the hefty price tag for brake pads. Just over double, it's about double the price of what you can find at the auto parts store for good quality pads. But people are saying that these are a very, very nice pad and that was what I'm looking for. You're only supposed to use them with centric high quality rotors, which is what these are. Part number is here. 
the rotor models are the rotor no, part numbers are different before whatever model you have in year so make sure you check on that before you do before you go buying it so anyways let's get into the install jeep jacked up on jack stands i put my jack stands on this side and under that control arm so now we can we've already broke our lug nuts loose when it was on the ground now we're going to take lug nuts off we're going to do this side first because i've got a special treat for y'all on this side This is what we got going on. We got our old stuff right here. You can see it looks really bad, actually. These rotors are meh. They still have some life, but we're gonna replace it anyways. We have our brake fluid reservoir cap off under the hood, so we can push this caliper back and get our caliper off. Um, another thing I was gonna say is Black Magic Brakes sells a kit that comes with the rotors, comes with centric calipers and the pads, and I think it's $400 for the front. I found my stuff a little bit cheaper, but that's probably a your mileage may vary kind of thing. I saw calipers were more expensive some places, rotors were more expensive some places, and I just happened to get a good deal at the right time. If I had to do it again, I would buy it all as a kit from Black Magic Brakes because you just know you're getting quality parts, and I really don't think it was that much of savings. It might have been like $20 or $30 by the time I was done with it. So, if I'm, I'm gonna drop a link in the description for that Black Magic Brakes kit. I'm not gonna link the other stuff. I'm gonna do the Black Magic Brakes kit, which is what I would recommend from now on. But it's the same parts, same parts, so to speak. So here we go. First, we got our light back here shining, so I can show you what I'm doing. This is where we have a surprise. I noticed last time I was in here looking at things. We have the regular factory bolt here, and down here there was a hex head bolt. I thought that was strange. I was like, well, what the heck? Well, I looked under there the other day and see if I can show you all this. There is no bolt. No bolt. So, check this out. Literally, there's no bolt holding this caliper in on this side. That's interesting. So I bought a new bolt and I put a new bolt in it. Bought it from AutoZone. This hole on the knuckle is stripped out. So we have to do a little bit of a thread repair and I will show that to you guys. But first off, we're going to take off this rotor. Looks like Half inch is the size. Still tight. It's probably tight because that was the only one that was holding it in. We're gonna set that to the side. Honestly, we can probably pull this entire caliper off. That's a no-go. So, pry bar. We're going to pry our rotors away from the caliper. Let's see if I can get in here. We've got it pried back enough. The trick is to stick it, the pry bar in here and press against the caliper and force it that way. Now we should have it off enough to where the whole caliper will come off. Let's see here. There we go. Came off. You guys can see this caliper was in real bad shape. This little seal around the piston is all brittle. Looks like we may have had a leak back here at the caliper. These guide pins are pretty stuck. That one's free, but the other one was pretty stuck. These pads look real bad that doesn't mean they were bad they look bad though not sure how well y'all can see it but we're gonna go ahead and set this up here just for now we're actually gonna take our pads out if we can there's really no point so we're gonna set it up there 
You can use a gear tie or a piece of wire to tie it up somewhere, but I'm just gonna set it right here for now. And pull the rotor off without knocking the caliper off. Rotors, rusty, it's nasty. This side's worn pretty good on the inside. It's all getting replaced. So now we are going to do some thread repair on this knuckle right here. What we're gonna do is an unpopular opinion. This is a helicoil kit or fix a thread kit. You can pick them up at AutoZone. This is not the proper fix for this, but it kind of is. It works just fine. I've used helicoils coils before for a lot of things. The fact is, should this helicoil coil back out, you still have another bolt and it's gonna stop just fine. It would have, you could, if you had zero bolts in here, it would stop just fine. It would make a lot of noise, but it would stop just fine. So you're gonna know if something's wrong, but we're gonna lock tight this in. It's not gonna come out. So what the kit comes with, it comes with this tap, special size and it comes with this little punch, and it comes with three of these little helicoils. I already had this kit from another project. The uh, pitch is M8 by 1.25. It's the same exact thing. What you can check is take bolt, and it should thread right into the helicoil, like so. And it does. So, our first step is to take a drill bit. I'm not sure exactly what size because I lost the instructions to this. I uh, used it a long time ago and I lost it. So we are going to use a small step bit and go up steps until we get to the size. And I'll let y'all know what size it is. All right, so we drilled it out to three eighths. Not sure if that's the exact size, but we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Got our tap here. Sorry, it's getting windy. My stuff's blowing everywhere. It's fixing to start raining. So if, that, if it gets loud, that's why. We have it right here. We have the tap. We're gonna take a wrench and we're just going to thread it in. Gotta make sure our tap's straight and we're gonna thread it in ever so slowly and then work it back out, in and out. Work it in and out, work it in and out. I am gonna move the camera for this and then go ahead and get started. Got my Loctite here. I use Loctite 243 for just about everything I do. I like the bottle, it's kind of expensive. I think it's like 20 something dollars for a bottle, maybe. But uh, this bottle lasts you a long time. I use it for everything. It's a medium strength thread locker. It holds it in there like it should be, but you can get it off if you need to. And that's pretty much the good balance for me. So we're just gonna take a little bit, pop this cap up. It helps if you don't drop the helicoil. We're going to put just a hair on these outside threads. Okay, that's plenty right there. So now we're going to take it in from the back side. And we have to thread it in nice and even. Make sure we're getting it straight. Let's see here. We're going in now. I just want to make sure we're doing it nice and even, nice and slow. We want to put it in there until it's about a quarter turn to a half turn below the surface. So I'm going to get back here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're at the surface right now. So we're going to go a half turn below the surface. That's good with me. Now the instructions, we have to do something with the tang. So we pull this straight out, turn it 90 degrees, and then I like to pop the tang like that. Gets rid of it. We have successfully helicoiled our threads. Take our bolt, make sure. Let's see here. Look at that. All right, I just washed the rotors off. They're over there, you can't really see them. But uh, I did them outside. I didn't want to take y'all out there, it started to rain. Just 
hit them with soapy water and then wiped them down with a microfiber, make sure they're 100% dry. No rust is gonna form on them right now. So now we're going, while they're finished air drying, we're going to assemble our caliper. The way you know what size caliper you need, you can hold it up. The calipers look identical. Hey, these actually came with new bolts. That's actually nice. Anyways, you take it and you match it up the way the caliper goes, like this, the bleeder screw. I'm working on the passenger side of the Jeep right now. This bleeder screw needs to be up here. This is the driver's side caliper, so I need to get a different caliper. Same orientation, it's on the top now. These come with a new bolt, mad banjo bolt, new crush washers. These actually come with new guide pin bolts, so that's nice, I didn't really need to buy new ones. Um, other thing, you need to make this, if this bleeder is not on the top, you're not gonna be able to bleed the brakes right. So that's how you know which one goes on which side, otherwise the calipers are identical. So we're gonna take this, make sure y'all can see what I'm doing in the camera. Yeah, y'all can. Okay. We have, I'll probably turn it this way, see if y'all can see that better. That works. Okay. There are two brake pads, two types of brake pads. They're not the same like they are on some vehicles. We have the ones with this little clip type deal and the ones with this little fork kind of thing. No, we're gonna put the ones with the fork in first. They go like this, set it in. You can use brake grease if you want, but I'm not gonna bother. Put it in there. You may actually have to use brake grease. Wow, that's tight. Okay, so that's in there now. Take our other one, goes like this, same direction, smiley face kind of deal. And it sets behind this, just like that. Bam, calipers assembled. So now we're gonna take it back over there and we're gonna put it on the Jeep. Okay, so uh, stuck our brake caliper out of the way back there. That's our old one. We're leaving it connected for right now. I took a little grease, put it on here, just so the pads will ride a little better. You don't have to do that necessarily. But next step, got our rotor. It's all cleaned up, dry. I'm gonna go ahead and fit it on here. I measured it. You can take measuring tape, measure from here to the outside lip, and it should be 2.75 inches for this model year Jeep. I, uh, there is a version that is three inches. I measured, they're the exact same as my other ones, so I know they're gonna fit right. Go in there, and we can take a couple lug nuts, go push it all the way on. We may actually, yeah, we're not gonna be able to throw these lug nuts all the way on, but they will hold it good enough. We may be able to thread them far enough. Look at there. Get another one. All the way on. Okay. Now that we've got the rotor held in, it's all cleaned up. We are going to take our new caliper just like this. Our piston is completely compressed. You can take it and pull our slide pins back like this with our bolts in them. May have to push the bolts back out a little bit and set it on here. I'm just a hair, got to push these back a little more, a hair from clearing. We have to, one thing I want to note, you'll see these little forks on top of these. We have to set these under first and then roll the bottom side in. So under, in. 
then these should both screw in. I know I might be in y'all's shot a little bit, but I'm gonna grab a wrench, wrong size. Try this one. That's it. This is a 12 millimeter for the new calipers. The bolts for the new calipers, the heads are smaller than they were on the old calipers. These are not starting. I'm in the wrong spot. So we may have to wiggle back and forth. Make sure your bolts are started. This one isn't either. So it may help if you take the wrench and push down here with it. Yeah, it started now. So now that this one's started, see if we can get this bottom one started. Yep, started now. Okay, we're gonna put these in. Now these bolts also serve as the guide pins. That's why they're greased like they are. The way these calipers are made, they serve as the guide pins, as well as holding the caliper to the knuckle. We just wanna snug these down. I'm gonna put y'all something out right here. Y'all know why this bolt was stripped? Because somebody tightened it too much. These only get tightened 11 to 12 foot pounds. That's it, that's like barely any torque. They hold themselves in there. They're not supposed to be overly tight because these threads will strip so easily. If you have a dual piston caliper, which is a big brake kit, it's like 15 or 16 foot pounds and that's an extreme amount of braking force. These are 11 to 12 foot pounds per the Black Magic brake instructions. They specifically say on outside of the box, do not put a lot of torque on these. So 11 to 12 foot pounds, you can use a torque wrench or I'm gonna use my torque meter. Click. 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 Okay. That was 12. Maybe 13. Might have went one over. Anyways, these calipers are on here now. It looks great. So our next step is we're going to run our brake line. Let me go grab that real quick. Okay, I grabbed my extended brake lines. You need to order both, so this is just an easy way to tell. The bolt hole is on the right side of this one and the left side of this one. Match it up to this. Our bolt here is on the left side. We're on the passenger side, so we need this one right here. We'll set our other one to the side, and it will mount up just like this, right up here. So I'm gonna grab a light so y'all can see what I'm doing a little bit better, and then we'll start putting it on there. Okay, it's starting to rain, but what we're gonna need, 7 16 wrench to get this off of here. T40 Torx, I believe. Let me check. Yep, T40 Torx to take the bracket off. So, what we're gonna do, I loosened this first and I loosened this as well. We are going to get our brake line ready right here. And we also need to check and make sure what size we need for this. And that is a 9 16ths, if I remember right. Should be a 9 16 Okay, get that handy. Take our, we're gonna take this off first. And we have our brake fluid bucket. That was what came out of my brake system yesterday. We're going to set it up under this because it is going to drop fluid on the floor. And I don't want that on my garage. So what we're gonna do, take this off real quick. Start unthreading, and this is probably gonna take a minute. So, I'll get that out and let y'all know. Okay, this took a little bit, we got it loose. We are dripping brake fluid pretty good right now. It's going on the floor, but I'll clean it up later. We got it unscrewed from our line. We need our T40 Torx. Take this off, reuse the bolt. There went our caliper, but we're gonna hurry because we're losing fluid. So we need our new brake line. Start 
start it in the hole. It fits in a tab up there as well. Oh, don't drop the screw. Okay, that's in. Take our wrench again, get it in there, set up in there, and we need to start it. We're going to let this drip into our bucket so we don't have to clean up even more of a mess than we already do. This has to start screwing in, and it's not yet. Okay, it was a little bit of a struggle to get in there, but we got it, it's tightened down. Now we are going to take out our banjo bolt with the crush washers on it. Don't drop your crush washers. Oh, it's a long banjo bolt. Don't drop it like I just did. Make sure you've got both crush washers. One is gonna go on the inside. Move this over here. One goes on the inside, one goes on the outside. Make sure I'm starting it in the right hole. Okay, I need a wrench. 9 16 is what size I'm hoping it is. That works for now. So we can pull this up here, get it tightened down in the spot we want it. That was a struggle, guys. Do as I say, not as I do. I had the brake line wrong. I had it up here, which is supposed to go below the bleeder screw, and I also had it backwards. So this, you need to make sure this curves up and it's below the bleeder screw. I know this is right because it all lines up now. It looks a little twisted, but whenever the suspension is flexing, that will straighten out. It won't be any big deal. We know it's on there right now. One thing I need to mention is we lost a decent amount of fluid. That's fine, and you just need to make sure that you don't lose too much fluid that it goes below the level in the master cylinder or in the reservoir, because then you'll have to take the master off and bench bleed it. I didn't, I kept an eye on mine when I was doing it, but just a word of caution to you guys, make sure that you are not losing too much fluid. Now, I've got a mess to clean up, and this brake job is actually all wrapped up, and it looks really, really nice. I'll go ahead and turn this around for y'all so you can see it. All right, guys, we're done. It looks really good. We got our new rotors, calipers, pads, extended brake lines on. Everything is tightened down, torqued to specs. Uh, next step is to bleed the brakes. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that. There's plenty of videos on how to bleed brakes out there. Everybody knows how to do it. I personally use this little vacuum pump. There's videos on using this exact pump out there. So I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. The other thing that you need to know is for the black magic brakes there is a break-in process required because they're a motorsport pad and it's on their website and it comes with the pad so i'm not going to go into detail on that but you need to do that like it's really important that you do that otherwise you're not going to get the same feel from the pads and the same performance but we've got all these new parts i'm not going to link these individually in the description i'm going to link the black magic kit because personally if i had to do it again that's the way i would go it's uh, a little bit more expensive maybe like $50 max but it is better kit I would say you get a better caliper than this dirt last one the caliper is a caliper but I would rather go with what black magic thinks on this matter so I will update y'all after I have bled and 
broke in the brake pads probably in a few days. Uh, I'll update y'all with the performance of the brakes. With I have 33 inch tires, but they're worn to 31s, so it's not going to be the greatest test. But I will also update y'all whenever I put 35s on the Jeep, and we'll see how it stops them. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, be sure to like it and subscribe. Comment if you want to see anything else. All right, guys, have a great one.